Scientists at the space agency NASA say the Hubble telescope has detected the galaxy 13.4 billion light years away. The red object you're seeing in this image is the farthest galaxy found to date. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has once again shattered expectations and expanded the frontier of cosmic discovery. This time, it has achieved what many believe to be unthinkable, breaking the Eddington limit during observations and capturing an unprecedented look into the heart of the early universe. This momentous feat culminated in a detailed zoom in on GNZ 11, the oldest known galaxy yet observed. GNZ 11, already renowned for residing at a staggering redshift of 11.09 comma, has been pushed into even sharper focus by the sheer power and sensitivity of the JWST. The implications of this event ripple not only through the field of astronomy, but also challenge fundamental ideas about the nature of light, matter, and the formation of cosmic structures in the universe's infancy. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The Eddington Limit, a fundamental threshold in astrophysics, marks the point at which the outward force of radiation from a luminous object equals the inward pull of gravity. When a telescope, or more precisely an observational technique, appears to exceed this limit, it speaks to an extraordinary leap in either technological precision or a previously unknown mechanism at play in the objects being observed. For the JWST to break this limit while zooming in on GNZ 11 is not only a testament to its revolutionary instrumentation, but also suggests that we may need to refine our understanding of the laws that govern high energy phenomena in the early cosmos. GNZ 11 itself, located more than 13.4 billion light years away, formed just 400 million years after the Big Bang. This ancient galaxy serves as a time capsule preserving in its light the early chapters of cosmic history. The Webb Telescope, by zeroing in on this primordial object with extraordinary resolution, has opened a portal into a time when the universe was only a fraction of its current age. Previous instruments, including the Hubble Space Telescope, hinted at the complexity of this galaxy, but it took the JDUST's infrared capabilities to truly dissect it. The telescope's instruments pierced through the cosmic fog with an acuity that transformed our perception of GNZ 11 from a blurry point of light into a dynamic structured entity, brimming with activity. The zoomed-in observations revealed that GNZ 11 is not a chaotic blob of star-forming gas as many expected, but a surprisingly well-ordered and chemically enriched system. Structures within the galaxy, spiral-like formations, distinct clusters of stars, and nebulae-like clouds emerged in stunning detail. These structures challenge prevailing theories about galaxy formation. Conventional wisdom holds that galaxies at such early epochs should be turbulent and unstructured due to the chaotic nature of early cosmic conditions. Yet GNZ 11 exhibits signs of maturity that, under current models, should not exist at such an age. The presence of heavier elements, for instance, implies that multiple generations of stars had already lived and died, enriching the interstellar medium with elements like carbon and oxygen. Materials that shouldn't have had time to form and disseminate across a young galaxy. The JWST's ability to achieve such resolution is in part due to its unprecedented sensitivity to infrared wavelengths. As light from GNZ 11 has traveled for over 13 billion years, it has been stretched into the infrared portion of the spectrum by the expansion of the universe. The JWST, designed explicitly to detect this kind of light, captured the ancient photons with minimal interference. Its segmented, gold-plated mirrors, tuned to perfection, collected and focused the light into its sophisticated spectrometers and cameras, allowing astronomers to peel back the layers of GNZ 11 structure with unmatched clarity. What makes the breaking of the Eddington limit so remarkable is not that the JWS itself emitted light in excess of this boundary, but that its observations revealed phenomena within GNZ 11 that appear to defy it. At the galaxy's core, a compact object, possibly an early black hole or an extremely dense star cluster, was observed emitting energy at levels that, on paper, should cause it to blow itself apart. Yet, it persists. This anomaly throws into question the robustness of our understanding of stellar and galactic physics. Could it be that conditions in the early universe allowed for a different set of rules? Or that unknown processes regulated the energy output to stabilize the system? 
The light emanating from GNZ-11's core was dissected using the JWST's near-infrared spectrograph near-spec, which revealed distinct emission lines suggesting high concentrations of ionized gas moving at relativistic speeds. The intensity and profile of these lines hint at either powerful outflows from a growing supermassive black hole, or an intense burst of star formation occurring in a relatively small region. Either scenario implies a level of energetic activity that seems to break conventional constraints, hence the reference to surpassing the Eddington limit. If the core object is indeed a black hole, it must be accreting matter at a rate far exceeding theoretical safety limits, indicating an early mode of black hole growth that remains poorly understood. The implications of this are staggering. First, it opens up the possibility that black holes formed and grew far more rapidly than previously thought. Traditional models suggest that supermassive black holes take hundreds of millions to billions of years to form through gradual accretion and mergers. Yet if GNZ-11 houses such a behemoth, then an alternative pathway must exist, perhaps involving the direct collapse of massive gas clouds or the formation of black hole seeds that skip several evolutionary stages. Such a scenario would revolutionize the timeline of black hole evolution and recalibrate how we interpret the brightness and mass distributions of galaxies throughout cosmic history. Second, the structural coherence of GNZ-11 introduces a paradox. How could such a young galaxy, only a few hundred million years into the life of the universe, exhibit characteristics more commonly associated with galaxies that are billions of years old? The Webb's observations show defined stellar populations coherent rotation, and a stable morphology. It even appears to possess regions analogous to spiral arms, which are typically the hallmark of dynamically settled, mature galaxies. This contradicts expectations that early galaxies should be irregular and clumpy due to frequent mergers and uncooled gas dynamics. These findings may force cosmologists to reconsider models of hierarchical galaxy formation, in which small proto-galaxies merge over time to form larger, more structured systems. Perhaps GNZ-11 is a rare anomaly, an overachiever in the early cosmos. But if further web observations uncover more galaxies like it, then the standard model of cosmic evolution might need a major revision. There's also the intriguing possibility that GNZ-11 formed in an environment unusually rich in matter density, which accelerated its growth. This could point to regional variations in the early universe's structure that we've only begun to understand. On the technological front, the success of the JWST in capturing GNZ-11 in such detail speaks to the power of human engineering and collaboration. The telescope's primary mirror, spanning over 6.5 meters, offers more than six times the light-gathering area of Hubble's, and its placement in the cold, dark environment of the second Lagrange point L2 allows it to observe faint signals with minimal background noise. When this capability converged with the rare and powerful signature emitted from GNZ-11, the result was a data set of unprecedented depth and clarity. Scientists were able to construct a high-resolution map of the galaxy's stellar population, trace the distribution of gas and dust, and even begin to model its star formation history. One of the more subtle revelations from the Webb's close-up of GNZ-11 is its surprisingly low dust content, especially given its metallicity. This suggests that the processes governing dust formation and retention in the early universe might differ significantly from those in later epochs. Dust is a byproduct of dying stars, especially asymptotic giant branch AGB stars and supernovae, and plays a crucial role in cooling gas to allow further star formation. If GNZ-11 developed its stellar populations without substantial dust, then it raises questions about the efficiency and timescale of early star life cycles. It also points to the possibility that the interstellar medium in such early galaxies could have been shaped more by ionization feedback and less by dust-mediated cooling, altering the way stars formed and evolved. The star formation rate within GNZ-11, based on the spectral signatures, is extraordinarily high. Despite its compact size, the galaxy appears to be converting gas into stars at a rate that rivals, or even surpasses, that of far larger systems. This hyper-efficiency could be linked to the galaxy's environment or to internal mechanisms that compress gas rapidly without major disruption. It's as though GNZ-11 is a cosmic forge, 
operating with relentless intensity during the universe's formative moments. Such a pace, however, is unlikely to be sustainable for long, suggesting that GNZ11 may soon, or already has, entered a phase of quiescence or transition. Another tantalizing aspect of the observations is the discovery of gravitational lensing effects in the region near GNZ11. Though not lensing the galaxy itself, nearby distortions suggest the presence of massive foreground structures, possibly dark matter halos, that could amplify or stretch light from background sources. This implies that GNZ11 might be located in or near a protocluster of galaxies, a high-density node in the cosmic web. If confirmed, this would be the earliest evidence of large-scale cosmic structure, forming far earlier than simulations currently predict. The proximity of such massive structures to GNZ11 could also have contributed to its rapid evolution. Galaxy interactions, gravitational dynamics, and environmental density all play roles in accelerating star formation and structural development. Perhaps GNZ11 is not an isolated prodigy, but the crown jewel of a thriving early community of galaxies. The JWST's instruments will likely continue to probe this environment, looking for companion galaxies, intergalactic filaments, and other hallmarks of an emerging cluster. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on web breaking Eddington limit capturing GNZ11 now? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.